Welcome to the Jocelyn Moore Show. My special guest has been on the show many times, Dr. Fred Walters Jr. Okay, he's he the instructor of Top Flight Competitive and Defense um, LLC. Today he will demonstrate and discuss the difference between automatic and semi-automatic weapons. If time permits, we will talk about other various topic matters. Welcome back. Hi, Jocelyn. How are you doing? Hi. Hi. Glad to see you back again. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Even okay. though you've done the show many times, just give a little bit about your background. Okay. I'm a I'm a 10th degree uh, red belt. Well, it's a black belt, but I'm also a red belt because I'm a Soki. Uh, I teach close quarter combat. I train military how to disarm weapons, train churches, uh, teachers, how to disarm weapons. The way things are getting today, this is something that people need. Also teach women's self-defense classes, but my specialty is disarming weapons and how to defend yourself. I do not teach people how to shoot weapons. You should go to a professional to learn how to shoot, but I teach you how to take uh, rifles, handguns, knives, clubs, uh, rape prevention, carjacking prevention, truck jacking prevention, anything on self-defense I do. All other things, seek other help. Okay, so you do not, so you do not teach um, you're not a firearm instructor. No, I am not a okay, firearm instructor. Okay. I didn't Don't even teach my wife that. how to shoot. <laughs> I, I didn't teach her how to shoot, but after she learned, then I taught her some things. But okay. you should go to a professional because I might, I do things out of habit and I might leave out something that you might True. need. Plus, okay. I was in the military, so I know how to handle weapons. Okay. So, why don't you talk to us about the um, auto and semi uh, medic? Okay. Now, the big thing today is automatic. Uh, automatic weapon. And like everybody got a big thing about these AR 15s. All right. This is about the same size as AR 15. Now, uh, AR 15, they were talking about replacing M16. Uh, and you call this an assault weapon. Number one, anything can be used as an assault weapon. All right. Your spoon could be an assault weapon if you attack somebody with it. But you cannot buy a military grade. AR-15 because it comes in for civilians. Now, this is a training weapon here. Now, I'm going to get this up close. Now, you can see right here, in one place it says safe and for uh, semi-automatic right here, semi. That's what it says on automatic. For semi's up at the top. You cannot buy a fully automatic AR-15. Now, if you went onto the battlefield, you would never take an AR-15 that you go to any local gun store. Because uh, a semi-automatic weapon, you have to squeeze the trigger to get the bullet to come out. That's how it works. A fully automatic uh, automatic weapon, you hold your finger on that trigger, and it will just keep shooting until it runs out of bullets. That's the difference. So when people, they get the misconception of these weapons are dangerous. Yes, they're dangerous in the wrong hands. You got idiots out there running around with these guns, and, 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 and shooting people is stupid. Now... I I'm, I don't like to, you know telling people how to think, but you have your own opinion. It, in in safe in the proper hands, this is no danger. I got weapons sitting alongside the wall. I can sit this on the wall anywhere. This weapon is not going to run across the room, off the table, and start shooting me. It's always an idiot behind this here trigger. Mm -hmm. That's the idiot out there shooting. They shouldn't be doing it. So don't don't ever get confused with that. You know, they says, oh, it's an assault weapon, assault weapon. Anything you use. I can use my PC, this here laptop, and beat the crap out of somebody. That's an assault weapon. When I go to court, I assaulted them with a PC. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's the difference. Now, here, this button here ejects the magazine. Mm -hmm. Now, they talk about high-capacity magazines, too. Well, if somebody came into your house and you wanted to defend yourself, you would like to have more than two or three bullets, you know. Right. <laughs> Think about it. You know, it's it's hard when you when you're when you're afraid, you're scared. It's a lot of things can go through your mind. People be shaking. So I hope I cleared that up. A semi-automatic weapon, you cannot buy a fully automatic weapon in this country, not unless you have the proper license legally. Oh, you cannot. Legally. Oh, huh? okay. You say you cannot yeah. buy a semi-automatic. Automatic. Yeah, okay. yeah. You know, now there's guys that do have them. I know guys that on YouTube they have them. I talk to the guy fully automatic because he has a license to have it. I'm not, hey, I used to have to clean these things in the military. I, I don't get excited about that, you know. So 
semi-automatic weapon, that's what this is. When you hear it go pop, 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 as fast as you squeeze the trigger, that's what happens. But if you lay your hand on the trigger, it's not going to shoot no more. Once it shoots the first time, that's it. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to say the difference with here. Now, these are all training weapons. They look real. And I'm not going to shoot myself because I'm not that crazy. I'm getting all my retirement. And well, my there. wife ain't getting none of my insurance either. <laughs> but <laughs> now, this is a 357, all right? This is my training weapon. The hammer has to be pulled back before it fires. Right. All right? So, and you only got six shots in here. This is semi-automatic. Set it you have to chamber it before you, before you fire. You see? But in real life, I'm doing what? It's doing it automatic. The gases from the, when I fire, the gases gives it enough energy to make this, make this slide back. That was a magazine that fell out. Let me see. Oh, actually, so is that a Glock? No, no, no this is a, a 45 caliber. Oh, that's right, 45. Sorry about you. Yeah. And it, it's a training weapon. And it's here, you know, just like right here. I can drop the magazine out. This is what I teach people how to do is disarm a weapon, drop this out. There's one bullet left. Fire it off. You don't have to worry about it no more. Well, that's another story. If you want me, you have to contact me. But just, the bottom line is, go ahead. I actually want a question before you go on. I mean uh, to interrupt you. So do you You also teach them how to clear the weapon? They get, you know, jam or double feet and all of that. They oh, right, yeah. teach them all of that. Right. They have yeah, well, to. What, what, who, their instructor should teach them that when they learn that's how to. Right. <laughs> but, you, but you're right because a lot of people, I see people doing stuff like this here. They have it turned this way. Right. Trying to jam it up in there. Exactly it only goes in one way. Right. I've seen people trying to put the bullets in backwards in the clip. So, you know, you have to put the put the magazine in, chamber, and it's ready to rock and roll. But mm -hmm. the thing of it is, a lot of people don't know. And this is stuff they do, or I'm getting I'm getting I'm, I'm jumping off subject here. But I was curious to get into this here about what people do and about disarming, but we're gonna stick to the program here. <laughs> no, you keep going, keep going. Okay. But this is what happens when the guy, when these guys, these young boys, they come up doing this stuff, you know. And, to me, it's easy to take it because, well, since we're going, if you hold the slider back right here, you hold the slider back here, what is it? One, see right here? Mm -hmm. It's not going to, you can't fire it. Mm -hmm. But you better know what you're doing. You better get the slider back a little. On a real weapon, it's easier. Uh, this is a training one. So I have to bring it back further. This won't fire. But if I go, if I go right here, it won't fire. But a training one, it don't. It, it's not. It's different. But if you hold it a slider back, they won't be able to shoot. But you better know what you're doing because you don't want the weapon sitting here and you got the mm. slider back trying to do this here. You get shot. You know that's it's crazy. So like I said, I teach people how to disarm. If the weapon's here, I want the weapon up in there so it can fire. Hand on the trigger, pull it, drop the magazine from here. The magazine falls out, and the gun goes off. There's no more bullets to fire. That's how I do it. And I was hoping if I had another person, I could have gave you a live demo, which I, I don't really do that much. Maybe the next time. But okay. I have to have somebody to show it because talking about it, a lot of times people can't comprehend what I'm saying. And it's just like me trying to do algebra. I'll be like, oh, I don't know. Oh, What's forget that. that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that's the difference. So that's when you have an automatic. This here is a semi-automatic handgun. This is a revolver. Same thing, it's just it shoots slower. You gotta each time you go, this side's gonna fire like here. This is a lot easier to fire because semi automatic pop, 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 pop. You can just fire it off. It sounds like it's automatic, but it's not. As fast you can squeeze this here, the faster the bullets come out. Now, when we're talking about, let me see. Now, here's another part, too. We was talking about the AR 15. Uh, let me, I'm gonna read this real quick, mm -hmm. okay. For a comparison, a boat a boat action rifle requires the user to cycle the boat manually before they can fire the second time. Now, just like this one right here, just say if this was a, a single boat fire, where I'd have to either do it this way to put the bullet in, or they have them come up here, and it has to, you know, well, if it come up here, it's going to be more of automatic. I don't know too much about those, but if you have to 
chamber from here. You know how you lock it down? Mm -hmm. That's a that's a boat fire. Mm -hmm. And you each time you want to do, you have to eject the bullet out, the shell out. Then you, another one goes in, or you put it in the fire. That's the difference. These can fire thirty rounds real quick. Mm. Now, if it was on fully automatic, it'd be a lot quicker than that because it's brrr, you can get them out there. All right. So, so let me ask you this, Fred. So, mm -hmm. what do they? What do people use that for here? I mean, why would they purchase that type of we weapon? Well. I mean, some people like like rifles. Some people like guns. I mean, I like collecting toys. I call them toys. Even though it's a weapon, I like collecting toys because that's just my thing. I like collecting cars. That's my thing. Fast cars. Nobody drives 180 mile an hour. My car goes over 180 mile an hour. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing it. You know what I mean? So people like it. You know, you can go hunting like out there, like out west. They shoot hogs. Uh, uh, coyotes. I mean, you need something like that. If you fired it, or, or just say if a bear came at me, if I went outside and there was a bear outside, I'd rather have an AR-15 than a single boat uh, weapon, a mm -hmm. rifle like this here. Because mm -hmm. it's here, if I got to go ch -ch -ch -ch, and load it and aim to shoot, I'd be dead with the time that bear got on me. But with a, with a semi-automatic, I could fire off 30 rounds. But people use it the wrong way. That's what the problem is. People use this weapon for the wrong purpose. Yes, they call it, uh, you use this in a case of war. I wouldn't want to go to war with an AR-15. Not unless it was fully automatic. This is a single shot. So if I had to, you know, if it was 10 guys over there, I didn't want to go pop, pop, pop. I want to go brrrrap, just like that. Mm -hmm. Hold my finger and just take them out. That's mm -hmm. the difference. And a lot of people, like I said, everybody's entitled to their own way of thinking. But a semi-automatic weapon is the same thing as just this here. This here, you can buy, you can get a weapon, hold maybe six rounds up to 21 rounds. Or you can get one, you know, get another clip and hold more than that. That's the difference. And really, the gun is not to be feared. It's a tool. Just like your fork, your spoon. And people are going to say, well, you don't kill people with a fork and spoon. That's right. But you can kill, but a normal person couldn't. People like me could use a spoon, a fork, a pen, or anything, and could take somebody out. And I'm not trying to act like I'm uh, all that in a bag of chips. If you know how to do it and use your tools, you can do a lot of things with it. You'd be surprised the weapons you carry around every day and don't even realize it. Yes, this can kill a lot more people a lot quicker. Yes, that's true. But you got to keep the weapons out of the hands of sick people, you know, idiots. Some people can't even chew chewing gum and walk at the same time. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe it should make a law like that, which they won't. But, you know, I think a universal background check, that's a good thing to do. If I can't buy a weapon here in, 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 D in Maryland, I shouldn't be able to go to West Virginia and buy a weapon. Or vice versa, if I can't buy one in California, I shouldn't be able to come to Massachusetts and buy one. So that's the thing. You got to keep a check on this stuff and you got to be safe because it's nothing but a tool for safety. Back in slavery, we didn't have tools. What would happen if we could have fought back during slavery? We wouldn't be in the position we're in now. So that's something to think about. So when people say, oh, why do you need all, why do you need a, a high capacity? Well, it depends who's trying to come in your house. You know, you got a mob out there with hoods on. <laughs> what are you going to do? Oh, let me get my single boat here. Let, let me say this before you go on. Uh, for, let me say this before you go on. Yeah. Uh, we, we talked about, you hear this on the news too, about getting, you have to get a background check. Yes. And then people get background checks and they're crazy. You know what I'm saying? You get background checks, so this person is fine. Then they end up killing people. Uh, killing the school, I... killing this, killing that. You know what I mean? So... I this don't have an answer more for that. guns than anything anyplace else. <laughs> but you know, the problem is it's like like when we're on our job. You know, when people you got rules on the job, but because a couple people mess up, they take it away from everybody, or they make rules that fit everybody. I don't have an answer, but they say, Well, if you don't, you stop making them. Well, look over in Japan. What was that guy that just got killed? They made a gun. He made one and shot and killed the guy. And they what they have like maybe 10 killings and what guns? I forget how long. It's not that much, you know. But it's a tool, just like a car. 
somebody runs over a bunch of people in the crowd, they don't stop making cars. You know what I mean? So hide, when you do a background check, it's a start. I mean, there is no answer. The genie's out the bottle. You can't put the genie back in, but you have to educate people. You have to educate the young kids. You can't just talk about education on TV. You got to go into the, I call it the combat zone. You got to go into the neighborhoods and talk to all the people. You just don't go into the million dollar neighborhoods and talk about, in the schools and talk about gun safety. You need to go down in the projects. You need to go down where, where young kids are looking at this stuff where they think that this is makes them a man. And that's what the problem is. They look at it the wrong way that this makes me a man. This makes you a punk in my eyes. Mm -hmm. Why do you need a gun to go do something? Can't, you can't talk about it. You need to keep your butt in the house and go back to school. So uh, I, I, I get to ranting off on this stuff. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I'm trying to stay on, on point. But like I said, but the, uh, uh, let me see. Let me give you something else I want to tell you. Okay. The, the National Rifle Association, NRA, says a common misconception about the weapon that the AR and its name stands for assault rifle when it actually stands for armor light rifle. That's what it stands for. It's not assault rifle. It's, that's the name that it stands for is the armor light rifle. And you can Google that and look it up. Do you know what it um, got the name from assault um, weapon rifle because people have been using it the wrong way, killing people? Oh, yeah. But see, but it has, uh, you know, yeah, because it has AR. Mm -hmm. So they think it's assault rifle. So they can put assault weapon. You know what I mean? So the key difference between the M16 and AR-15 is that an automatic rifle continuously fires when the trigger is held down. That's what I was saying. While a user must pull and release the trigger after each shot with a semi-automatic gun. That's the difference. So when people say, oh, this is an assault weapon, it is not an assault weapon. This can be an assault weapon right here. A cane. If I go and beat the crap out of somebody, when I go to court, here's an assault weapon, a cane. So, you know what I mean? But I understand where they're coming from, but they kind of make it, you know, sound like that this is the worst thing. It's the people. It's not the weapon. It's the people. You get these young kids. You get these hot weapons off the street. And I don't know how they do. I'm not a cop, you know, but I understand why cops don't like them because I was talking to one the other day. It kills a lot of people real quick. But trust me. I would never want to go on the battlefield with a semi-automatic weapon. No way. This will not reach the battlefield, not let somebody have one there. I'd rather have an M16 or AK-47 or something like that. Or knowing me, I like to have a 50 caliber. And that way I'm sitting back a mile, popping people a mile and a half away. Mm -hmm. But anyway, let's go. All right, let me see. Uh, did that answer the question? Yep. Okay. Uh, let me see which other one we're going and they were saying, uh, uh, what, what's considered semi-automatics? Well, I, I covered that, some handguns and rifles. Uh, let me see. Okay, you want to jump down to aggressive uh, dog behavior? Yeah, let's, let's do that. And the thing is uh, that, I, and I know some viewers do not like, gun, do not like guns. You know, um, like we say, it's the people behind the guns. The guns is, that is that the guns, right? You can't, the gun doesn't walk up doesn't walk by itself it's a person exactly. behind the guns you know it, it has to be yes anyway, and it's, it's a shame because it's out of control it's out of control i don't know if it yeah. ever will get back under control no it won't because no, here's it, the it, thing. it won't it, it won't it won't no it won't because here's the thing all the honest people all the law-abiding citizens can take all their weapons hand them in they can destroy them all the good people can destroy all their weapons do you think the criminals going to destroy their weapons they won't. The criminals won't do it. Look at the people in Australia. <laughs> they, they, get, they, they got strict gun laws. They took away their weapons from them. The criminals got the weapons. They break into a person's house. They know they don't have a gun to fight back. So that's where it has to be common sense. Same. And through education, you got to start schooling people. And I'm, I'm serious. Mm -hmm. now, our, you know, they talk about this stuff on TV. You hear it when somebody's a mass shooting, which is wrong. They need to catch these people. Don't kill them. Give them some hard time. Let give them some hard time and videotape them in there doing the worst job. Having to, you know, I, I, I get a little crazy with this stuff, but I have them clean out sewers, uh, 
waxing the inside of a, a cesspool tank. I have them doing all kinds of stuff. Let put that stuff on TV with a ball and chain around her ankle out there working, doing work. And I tell you what, that'll make the next person think about doing something stupid. But what they do? Uh, taking them, taking them Wendy's to buy them a hamburger or something. It should be hard it, time. It, it's sad because even though with hard time, they were going to move on hard time. There are families who would say that that person is still alive. They in jail. Their loved ones can visit yeah. them. Even yep. though they doing what you say, give them a hard time, but their families can still see them. We have to, you know, a family member might say we have to go to the cemetery to see our loved ones. Yes. Yours is still, you know, still, you know, yours is still alive. So it's sort of like unequal, you know. But let's let's Look, move on. I'll, I'll go ahead. You have something else to say before yeah. you move? punish them? Give them hard time. Mm -hmm. That's it. If they, if they have to get it so these people will see it in video, put it on TV. Let them see them doing hard time. And I mean struggling. You know, you know, you think about some of them other countries, they give them prisoners some hard time. These prisoners go to go there and they, they live better than we do. They sit there eating, I don't know what they eat because I ain't never been to jail, but you know, they go in there and lift weights, watch TV. But anyway, you're right. Let's go to aggressive yes. things. Know, it's just it's just okay, let's go on. To aggressive okay. dogs, what causes um a dog to be aggressive? Wait, what, okay. they treated mean or yes and that's the thing just like dogs are like people you know and like i said before you know i'd rather have some i'd rather have a dog than some of these people out here to be my friends because mm -hmm. the dog is going to be loyal when the when the pup when the dogs are puppies when they're coming they're not mean not unless something's wrong because there's some dogs that just like humans mental problems they have them yeah. too but you know but a dog will protect his master you treat that dog good it's going you train your dog right it's not going to be aggressive you know and people beat dogs they treat them real harsh that dog hates humans just like an elephant or any other animal you treat them bad they're going to get you back one way or another so you know but that's just, that's that's the thing right there and you see you see these guys got these muzzles on their dogs and as a young kid my dogs would bite people but i had a muzzle on him but we lived in the hood so your dog better bite. We ain't had no dog coming to go. <laughs> you know, they know you. Okay. You come in our house, you're getting eaten up. Okay, the way it was. okay. Uh -huh. right. We have about a few, about five minutes left. I don't actually do this. I was watching. I don't tell you story. Short stories. I was watching the. Um, uh, I think it was Judge Judy. I can't remember what what show uh -huh. it was. And one woman was suing her neighbor because the dog bit her dog and bit her. Right. Uh -huh. She wanted she wanted to seek medical, um, um, uh, you know, to have her medical bills taken care of. Mm -hmm. So the other woman said, "My dog don't bite." So my dog couldn't have possibly possibly done that. My done my gun. I mean, excuse me, my dog did not do that. Right. I thought all dogs bite. That was the craziest thing she ever said. My dog do not bite. She didn't yeah. want to get paid that money. That's why. Yeah, I know. But let me ask you this about real quick about pit bulls. Now, uh -huh. people say they're very dangerous. Are people training them to be that way? Or is there such thing as a nice pit bull or what? Are they yeah, born nice that bull. way or what? Yeah, they train them to be that way. A pit bull is just like any other dog. He's just like a little, 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 little I call them little rats. You know, little teeny dogs people carry mm -hmm. around their pocketbook. I forget what they I couldn't. Dog, dog got to work for his keep, but no, a pit bull is only going to be as mean as you train it. Now, they got a strong bite. They can bite. They're strong. Those are some muscular dogs. And, and just like a German Shepherd, they will bite you too, but it's the way you train them. Think about your kids. All right. You know, people that beat their kids and treat them bad. Their kids, a lot of times they wind up in jail or killing somebody or mm -hmm. killing their parents. You know what I mean? So the, the dogs are no different than humans. They're not. They're just a little bit more loyal than humans. Your dog ain't gonna That's backstab true. you like humans will do. You know That's what I mean? True. But if you if you treat your dog right from a from a, from he's a puppy and training right, mm -hmm. he's just as safe as any other dog. Now they might have some mental issues too because I never owned a pit bull. I never owned one. I only owned, owned German shepherds, and they were loyal. I mean, they they were good. So, but they all they give the pit bulls a bad name too. But there's some dogs out there and i forget the breeds of them that it's illegal to bring in the united states to own them because they're you know they're little nuts they're tough 
you know, some dogs that you can't keep them pinned up because they got so much energy. You got to let them out and run to burn off that aggression. So that's another story. And, you know, but no, they're not that bad. I never owned a pit bull. I just owned German Shepherds. And I never had a problem. My dog would bite you, but they wouldn't bite me. But Oh, they bite me. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Not you, but, you know, if somebody's coming in the house. But I lived in, I lived in the hood back in them days. Now, where I live at now, I still have my dog. I don't want no friendly dog <laughs> because somebody come in your house and the dog sitting there. <laughs> no, I want a dog that's going to work for his keep. I'm asking you this. Um, I, I know of a guy, he had a dog. It was just a little teeny dog, though. Someone broke into his house and when he came home, his furniture was disarray and he heard his barking. Uh, the burglar put the dog in the, in, in the closet, you know, so. Not See, much help. That's why I don't want a little dog. I don't know. Why don't you this? Uh, we really run out of time. Are female dogs are they more aggressive than male dogs? So does it is does it make any difference? No, it don't. No, it don't. Female versus male. No. Well, I just like saying I just like saying are women more aggressive more aggressive than men. You say no. Some people might hey, some people might say that. I know, but it depends. Some people might say that. It depends, you know, it depends on what the woman went through that makes them aggressive because we're like that. You know, mm -hmm. I you know, you get around, you know, how you get around some people mm -hmm. and you just can't be nice. You gotta muscle up and get mm -hmm. what? Yeah, what's what, what's your problem? What? yeah, yeah, you know. So you gotta get on the you know, uh -huh. cower down a little bit, you know. So it's 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 you know, it's like I said, it's how you train them. Now they're all all most dogs are going to be loyal to the masters. The bigger the dog is, the more protection. Now, if the dog thinks he can overpower you now, that's a different story. They're going to just pull you around if they're untrained. But if you train them right, uh, I tell you, I'd rather have a dog than than half these people running around the street today. And I don't hang out with that's people. True. That's but true. But dogs are loyal to the masters if you treat them right. Okay. Now I hate to tell you this about running out of time. So do you I know, I know, I know, I know. Things get going good. So you have your contact information if someone wants to get in touch with you about yes. training or yes. Anything. Okay. If anybody's looking for me, like right now I'm doing churches now, you have to call, make an appointment, uh 717-657-8397, or look up top flight combatters and defense LLC, or you can Google it or go to the website. Is www.topflightcombatantsanddefense.com. The uh, the email account is topflightcombatants at gmail.com. And like I said, if you you forget that, just remember just dial seven one seven six five seven eight three nine seven. Leave a message and I will call you back. You know that's no problem. But the churches, school teachers, you know, prepare yourself because who knows what's going on. People sure. just buying up guns. And I mean, like I said, the gun is not the problem. It's the idiot behind the, the people behind, behind, the the, the people behind the it. Is. That's true. We had too many, so many crazy people out here. What is? I mean, and we not. don't know. And the problem is you don't know who's crazy or not. That's true. I mean, but so many folks look crazy. So you can, but you can't pick people how they look. So mm -hmm. I, I don't have an answer, but I think a universal background check. I, I, I'm I'm 100 for that. I right. am because you you know if you got a if you're doing best you can't fly on a plane if you get put on that list. So why not? And then heavy people are under age. So if you can't if you can't drink liquor, you shouldn't be able to get a gun. Well, Fred, this is it. I know. It's I'll tell you till next time. Thank you. I will see you backstage anytime. Sure. Goodbye, okay. everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Next week, special time is 6.45 with my special guest, Daryl Scott, former singer with one of the most successful American vocal groups of the early rock and roll area, The Platters. I know a lot of you remember The Platters, okay? Be with us next week at 6.45. Good night.